Now that we've defined GDP conceptually and explained the different categories of GDP expenditure, we can think about how to calculate GDP mathematically. Well, it turns out that's actually just really simple. So we can say that GDP, which again represents either total output or total income or expenditure in an economy, is just if we were thinking about all the different final goods produced in the economy, we would say, you know, if Q1 is the quantity of the first final good and P1 is the price of the first final good, we'd multiply those together to find out how much Q1 contributes to the economy. And then we would do the same thing for the second good and the third good and so on and so forth for all of the goods in the economy. So we could simply say that our GDP is just the price of the first final good times the quantity of the first final good plus the price of the second final good times the quantity of the second final good, and so on and so forth. To illustrate how to calculate GDP, let's do a numerical example. In this example, we're going to consider a very, very simple small economy that actually only produces two final goods. And those two final goods are bread and butter. And you'll notice that if we're given the prices and quantities of each of the final goods, then it's pretty easy and straightforward to calculate GDP. So here, if we're saying that each loaf of bread sells for a price of $3 in the market, and this economy is transacting 100 loaves of bread, then bread's contribution to GDP is just the price of bread times the quantity of bread, in this case, $3 times 100, or $300. Similarly, if butter is selling at $2 a unit, and we're selling 50 units of butter, then that's going to be our Q2 and our P2 here. And we can say that butter's contribution to GDP is just $2 times 50, or $100. If our economy had more than two goods, we would do this for each one of the goods, but here our economy is simple enough that we can just stop because we said that these are the only goods that we have in our economy. We can think of total GDP then as just the sum of the individual goods contributions to GDP. So we can just think about this total as 300 plus 100 or $400. So we can say for our very simple economy in the year 2011, as I've noted here, that our GDP, or our measure of total output or income, is in fact $400. In order to illustrate an important point about year-over-year -year GDP growth, let's take some hypothetical numbers now for the year 2012 rather than the year 2011 and calculate GDP again so that we can think about how to calculate year-over-year -year changes in GDP. So again, we're just going to use the formula that GDP is equal to the price of the first good times the quantity of the first good plus the price of the second good times the quantity of the second good, and so on and so forth. So here, if we're going to think about bread's contribution to GDP, while well, bread is now selling at a price of $4, and we're selling 125 units of bread, so bread's contribution is just 4 times 125, or $500. Similarly, butter's contribution to GDP is just the price of butter times the quantity of butter, or $2.50 times 60 units which gives us $150. So butter's contribution to GDP is $150. And since, again, these are the only two goods in our economy, our total GDP for 2012 is just 500 plus 150, or $650. As you may remember from your math class, we have a formula for percentage change. We can say that percent change is just our final value minus our initial value divided by that initial value and then multiplied by 100%.
So we can use this formula to calculate the percentage change in GDP from 2011 to 2012. So in this case, our final is our 2012 value and our initial is our 2011 value. So we can just say final minus initial is just 650 minus 400 divided by initial, which is 400, times 100%. 650 minus 400 is just 250. So this is just 250 over 400 times 100%. If we do 250 divided by 400, this actually gives us 0.625 times 100%, which is equal to 62.5%. So we can say that the percentage change in GDP from 2011 to 2012 in our very small economy is 62.5%. Or more specifically, as we'll see later, the change in nominal GDP from 2011 to 2012 is 62.5%. It's important to understand where this change in nominal GDP, in this case a value of 62.5%, comes from. So we can look over here to try to understand what's going on. You'll notice that part of the change that we see here is due to the fact that there's actually more of both goods being produced in 2012 than was produced in 2011. We'll notice our production of bread went from 100 units to 125 units for an increase of 25%. Also, our production of butter went from 50 to 60, which is an increase of 20%. But you'll notice here that we have an increase of 25% and 20%, but yet we have an increase in GDP of 62.5%. As it turns out, the changes in prices reflect the rest of what we have going on here. So we'll notice that not only did the quantities of the goods we're producing go up, but the prices for those goods went up as well. We can see the change of $3 to $4 is a change of 33%, and the change from $2 to 250 is a change of 25%. So that's accounting for the rest of this overall 62.5% change. But it's somewhat misleading because we're talking about GDP as total output in an economy, and we're actually conflating two things, one being the change in the actual amount of stuff being created, and the other being the changes in prices. And as it turns out, the concept of real GDP is going to help separate out these different effects, and we're going to understand how to calculate not only nominal GDP as we see here, but also real GDP.